what's up everyone welcome back to fisher hex today we're going to be doing a subscriber request and you guys keep asking me what do i feed my eels and how often do i feed them now i've done this video in the past or something close to it uh, but in this one i'm going to go ahead and break down everything that i put together in this little mixture and then kind of talk about what i was originally feeding and how often i was feeding my eels and now what i'm currently doing uh, because they are growing and getting pretty aggressive so let's go and get into it all right, so as I mentioned, I usually do this every three months, but since I have a second eel, Nigel, which is that snowflake hybrid, and uh, Reggie's getting quite a bit bigger, and also his aggression is starting to go up, I have to feed him a little bit more often, so I'm actually starting to do this every month and a half to two months, and uh, it's it's not too bad. I think the overall price for this for the uh, octopus as well as the scallops and the shrimp is approximately $15 or so, given if something's on sale or where you get it from, but about $15 for two months worth of food for uh, two eels is definitely a pretty good deal. So I do want to mention that all my ingredients are raw and uh, you don't want to be feeding your eels anything that's pre-cooked because it might be good for us and safe for us to have pre-cooked food. But for eels and stuff like that, you basically are cooking out all the nutrients and everything that would be beneficial for the eel, uh, rendering the food pretty much useless and pointless to feed to your eel. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for ingredients for this recipe. All right, so when it comes to finding these ingredients, it's pretty simple. I just get the octopus from the frozen seafood section. They usually have squid there and some kind of scallop or shrimp, but I'm usually going back and forth between octopus and squid. Now, when it comes to the shrimp and the scallops, I get that from the fresh section there where they have uh, the big counter with all that laid out. Now, of course, you can get other things like other types of fish or clams or whatever you want to spend the money on. But I find that my eels in particular are pretty picky, especially Reggie. And uh, he definitely likes his octopus, uh, scallops, and shrimp. And that's about it. Even silver sides at this point he doesn't mess with. So these three ingredients are working well for me. So I might as well just stick with them. So as you guys can see, the preparation is pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and peel these shrimp real quick and then cut everything up into little squares. Put it all in the bowl, mix it up, and then put it in individual bags before freezing it again. Now, if you're going to cut this octopus up, make sure you use a sturdy knife and a, a steady uh, cutting board here. Basically, if it's moving around, you might cut your damn fingers off. So just keep that in mind when cutting frozen octopus, all right? So while I'm cutting this stuff up and packaging it, let me go ahead and give you guys a little background on Reggie and kind of what's going on with him. Now, if you've been here for a while, you know that I got him when he was about six to eight inches long and the thickness of a number two pencil. Now he's just underneath three foot and probably an inch and a half thick. And uh, he's definitely kind of changed his whole personality since he's moved into the 300 gallon. And as I mentioned before, he used to like silver sides and he just completely stopped. And now this is the only stuff he eats and he has to eat it pretty much every day or he starts trying to pick everybody off in the tank. Now I did start off with nine Chromis. I only have six left and well, you can guess where the other three went. Now, it could partially be their fault because when I first got them, they all went into his little cave. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. Out of a whole 8-foot tank, they decided to go sleep in the place where the eel is and the only place that he likes to go. So, I guess uh, it didn't work out very well. He kicked them out pretty quick. But uh, either way, he's just his whole personality has changed since he's moved into this tank. He's very aggressive. Before, when the 125, he would let me kind of rub my fingers down his back when he was after he was feeding, and he was just really chill about it. Now, I can't even get my hands near him without him trying to take my finger off and uh, you guys know have known that from day one I've always fed him with a chopstick because uh, I just never trusted him if you've ever seen the anatomy of a snowflake eel or a moray eel they have uh, basically two sets of jaws and if this guy gets a hold of my finger he's uh, either coming out of the tank with me trying to get his freaking mouth off my finger or uh, he's going to take the finger with him so either way it's not a good situation so needless to say, I'm definitely feeding him a lot more to help uh, curb that aggression. And so far, it's working. He hasn't uh, attacked me or taken out any more of his tank mates. And it could have been just a fluke with uh, the Chromis being in his territory. And he just wanted to show him what's up. But uh, well, I guess we'll never know. Either way, whatever crisis he's going through at this point or whatever's causing him to be so aggressive, uh, whatever that might be, I hope he gets through it because I do not want to remove him from this tank. I know that that's going to be a nightmare in itself trying to do that. I just don't want to sacrifice and cause issues with all the fish. Not only do I have in there right now, but what I plan on adding. And uh, you guys keep asking me what I'm going to add to this tank. We're looking at at least another 10 to 15 tanks as well as a lot of miscellaneous fish. And uh, I like a lot of fish, and that's just kind of how it is. So if he starts picking people off, I kind of have to decide what I'm going to do and I love Reggie but he probably will end up in a system by himself before I kind of sacrifice the overall uh, quality and uh, what I want for this build. 
Well, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this food or anything else that I do with my eels, feel free to put that stuff in the comment section below. Now, the next video, I'm going to show you guys what I make for my fish. Now, I used to buy the LRS food and kind of buy all this pre-made frozen uncooked food, but I decided I was going to go ahead and kind of do my own mixture, which is a uh, fish food slash coral food, and I'll show you guys kind of how I make that and then how I feed it and how I manipulate the apex and the power heads and all that kind of stuff with feed modes to not only take care of the fish, but to also take care of the coral at the same time. So stay tuned for that video. That will be out next. And if you guys have any more questions, again, let me know, and I'll see you next time. Peace.